Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest says that most believers, they don't even know how to make Jesus irresistible. Not only is there a much better way to lead people to Messiah, there's a much better way to be healed. She's found that after her teaching, evangelism and healings, they're easy. Want to find out how simple it is? Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Did you know that you have a legacy? Natasha's great grandfather was the only Christian she knows of in her family. There were 70 years of atheism in the former Soviet Union, communism. How old were you when you saw your first Bible? Uh, about 30 years old. Can you imagine the first Bible she ever opened? She's age 30. She was raised as an atheist. She couldn't understand someone that believed in Jesus. But her grandfather, once a week, he would gather their big family together and he would read from what book? He would pull his big Bible and he would open it. He would put his glasses on. He would point the finger on the page and start reading. And my grandmother, his daughter, she would tell me the story over and over because when I was a, just a child, I would come to visit her every summer. And she would tell me that story. And because I grew up in, uh, under communism, didn't know anything about God, I thought it was kind of she made it up or s just a strange thing. But then uh, after, later, when I became a Christian, got born again, the first thing that the Holy Spirit reminded me, it was that story. And I knew that every time a miracle would take place when my great-grandfather, who was absolutely illiterate, didn't know alphabet, couldn't read newspaper with the Stalin speeches printed in there, and yet every Sunday he would open his Bible, put his 11 children around the table, and read the scripture. So one day, a colleague of hers, uh, a, another atheist, mm -hmm. Allah, had a brain tumor. And she <laughs> calls you up. And what did she say? Well, she invited me to come and visit her to her apartment. So we didn't, haven't seen each other for almost a year. And so I went to visit her and here she started to tell me about Jesus. She gave me her story. She developed a brain tumor and you know, the medical service in uh, Soviet Union was very poor. So the doctors really diagnosed her with a brain tumor and said that, you know, you're gonna, going to die. We cannot help you. So she went to all the extrasensories, and the last person she went to was her aunt. She was an underground Pentecostal believer. So her aunt took her to the church, and Allah received Jesus into her heart, and right in front of all the believers, the swallowness disappeared, pain was gone, and so she, she was healed. And so the next day, she took all the medical papers that she had, went to the doctors and just asked him to run the tests, etc. And they were so shocked to see that she was absolutely healed. This is God. He's healed me. So what did you think when she told you what happened to her? Well, I thought just what the doctors told her. They said, well, sometimes unexplainable things happen, but it cannot be God because God doesn't exist. So this is what I told her. You know, don't tell me about Jesus because I, you know, it's a mythical figure because this is exactly what the Soviet encyclopedia placed in every library all over the Soviet Union. It's, it's said next to Jesus Christ, a mythical figure. So, and this, I told her, he is just a fairy tale. So she gives you a Christian magazine. Mm -hmm. You don't throw it away because at that time, uh, in the former Soviet Union, they had nothing. When Allah gave me this magazine, a Christian magazine printed in Russian, smuggled into the Soviet Union by Russian Baptists located in Sacramento, California. So 
I took this magazine and told her, don't call me anymore because, you know, I don't want to hear about God. I don't want to hear about Jesus. He helped you, that's fine, but I don't believe in him. And so I told her, when I am ready, I will call you. And I left. Late By the way, when you left, what, what was going on in the mind of your friend Alma when you walked out that door? This is what she told me later. She said, when you closed the door, I went in pray, into prayer and I told God, God, she is going to hell. There is no hope for her. <laughs> she really gave up on me. I was so resistant. I was so hard. And I just wouldn't accept that as a truth. I read from cover to cover this magazine. And then, uh, you know, it's the first Christian literature that I ever seen in my life. So I decided to write a letter to the editor, very short. I'm 29 years old, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in the existence of God. If he existed, then why? And then I listed all the questions. Mailed the letter, S Gorbachev became just the head of the, so of the Communist Party. A little bit more freedom, but still the country was closed and KGB watched through every mail. So I didn't expect even that they will let the letter go through the border. And then two months later, to my surprise, I received this package. I opened the package, and for the first time in my life, I see a small blue Bible in Russian. You know? <laughs> you know, there is something, you know, you. this is what I realized, you can live in the lie, you can be brainwashed for 70 years in the country when the system tells you there is no God and, and you really don't know what's truth anymore. But when, if you are looking for the truth, when you see it, everything in you really recognizes it. So when I opened the Bible and the first page, the first verse, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, something was going on on the inside. It it sounds so familiar, although I never read it before, never seen. It's almost like every cell in my body was responding to the truth. And I didn't know at that time what was it, but it was God already knocking at my heart and trying to reveal himself to me. So I read, you know, the funny thing was there was a Bible in the package. There were some Christian brochures and I couldn't really understand why in the world they would put 10 copies of the same issue of the Christian newspaper. Well, what happened was, uh, you know, when I brought this package and this Christian literature to my home and I put them on a desk and I start reading magazine and, and the newspapers, uh, my father came. He was a political officer in the Soviet army teaching communist ideology for 28 years. So he came, comes home and here he sees all this Christian literature. He got very angry and he said, you know, you, you need to get rid of this because they will come come they you know i didn't know who they they will come and they if they will see they will arrest us and etc cetera, etc cetera. so just take away this because my family you know we were readers we loved to read we had a lot of books you know dostoevsky chekhov pushkin so i just hid those uh, brochures between the books on the bookshelves and then i hid one uh, copy of the of the newspaper uh, in my room and then i took the nine other uh, came out, you know, we were, we lived in an apartment building and I put them in the mailboxes of my neighbors because, you know, you don't, you don't waste anything in the, you know, in the Soviet Union because, you know, we lived in a time of deficit. You don't throw away even a newspaper. So I put in the mailboxes thinking, because I was still an atheist, thinking, you know, if they will come, then I will not be alone on the train to Siberia, you know. <laughs> so. Okay. A miracle happened. Two months after she sent this letter to America that she didn't even think would get there, a letter comes back mm -hmm. from America, and two sentences in that letter, you'll be shocked when you hear it, totally transformed her life. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Hello, YouTube, Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of 
It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. I tell you, we're on the edge of our seat. <laughs> tell me about this letter you get from America uh-huh. two months after you wrote a letter and didn't even expect mm-hmm. a reply. Well, in fact, it was a few months after I got my first package since that time. The, this Baptist mission in, located in Sacramento, California, they've been so faithful, they would send a monthly a package with another issue of a magazine, some brochures, and 10 copies of the same issue of the newspaper. Did you keep putting them under uh, the yes, doors? I kept putting because, you know. She's an evangelist and doesn't, <laughs> I, he, he doesn't even know it. <laughs> and I didn't even know it. So uh, what happened one day, I received this letter and the return address said it's Sacramento, California, but the name of the person who mailed it was an American name. It was, as I remember, it was Patrick Panic. I, I never knew this person. So I opened the letter, start reading it. So this man writes to me that he is a Christian and he decided to visit this Russian church that is not far from his home. Mm -hmm. And so when he came to this Russian church and as he stood at the book stand, he meets this Russian man named Nikolai who was an editor of the magazine to whom I wrote a letter. And he said, as they start talking, Nikolai pulls out of the pocket of his jacket my letter. And he tells this American believer, she is an atheist, she's 29 years old, she doesn't believe that God exists, please pray for her. And he handed to him my letter. I mean, when I read this, that touched my heart so much. An American Christian, and, and this editor was didn't throw away my letter, he carried it, he treasured it. It means my life matters, it means there are people, there is an American who is not indifferent to me. And then the last two sentences, they were, the, as we say in Russia, the last drop in my overfilled cup. <laughs> <laughs> it said, I want you to know I am praying for you and God loves you. That was it. Now I know that we put these uh, uh, sentences at the end of every letter without even thinking, but these two sentences changed my life. What did you feel? I felt like, I mean, there is someone whom I consider an enemy. He's praying for me. He cares about me. He wants the best for me. And then he says that God loves me. Now, by that time, every night, you know, because I read all the literature, and at the end of every issue of the magazine and the newspaper, there was a Lord's Prayer. So at a certain point, I start thinking, what if he exists just in case I'm going to start praying before I go to bed, just reading this Lord's Prayer, just in case, you know. Insurance. And so when I read God loves me, it just was, it just penetrated my heart. I was so excited and I just ran to the phone to, <laughs> to call my friend Allah. The one that says you're going to hell. Yes, she gave up on me. <laughs> so anyway, I called her and I said, Allah, you need to understand, I got a letter from an American. Can you imagine an American? And he says that God loves me and he's praying for me. I need to show you this letter. I need to translate to you this letter. And she was not really very, very excited. She gave up for, uh, on me for sure. And she said, well, you know, I don't really have time. Tomorrow is a Sunday, I'm going to church. I don't have time for you. And I said, well, can I go to church with you? Just to show this letter. <laughs> it's so kind of, I'm inviting myself. I hope you're getting this. This woman so was sure she was going to hell, she didn't want to even invite her to church. <laughs> so she finally agreed, you know, and so we met together the next day. I I translated the whole letter while we were riding a bus. So we came to the church. Uh, it was an old Pentecostal church. They survived persecution, etc. And so we were sitting on the balcony. And uh, during the service, uh, my eyes suddenly were opened. And I find, suddenly realized that God is a reality. He is real. He exists. You know, my, uh, I, I was crying and I was whispering to God. I said, God, I'm sorry I didn't know you existed. If I had known you existed, I would, I would follow you. I'm so sorry. I just didn't know about you anything. Could you forgive me for that? And then there was an altar call. You know, I knelt, such was the tradition, you kneel. And all I could say, everything was so spontaneous, but it was God. And I was just crying and repeating the same phrase. 
Denise, you know, Jesus, I didn't know you existed. I'm so sorry. And then uh, uh, the, the minister of the church helped me and led me into the Lord, uh, you know, into the prayer of repentance and accepting Jesus. And when I stood up, I never thought that I lived with a, such a burden. When I stood up, the burden, it seemed like the burden of the sins of the whole world was lifted from me. And I was filled with peace and joy and lightness. I was transformed and I was absolutely a new person. So I'm, the, the, the next thought was, you know, I need to run home and tell my parents. They will be excited to hear about <laughs> that God exists and Jesus is real. As a new believer, she was hired as a translator and heard a revelation that was different than any of these new Christians had ever heard before. And she found out that she could operate in miracles the same way the people on TV did. She never knew it. She thought people had to have special anointings from God. But she got the most amazing revelation that few Christians in America have. We'll be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural! Call now to get Natasha Shedrovaya's anointed five-part audio CD teaching set, Making Jesus Irresistible. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 3329. Through Natasha's anointed five-part audio CD teaching series, Making Jesus Irresistible, you will gain fresh perspectives on divine healing. On CD number one entitled Natasha's Story, Natasha reveals the amazing plan God had for her life and the supernatural journey that led her from a communist atheist to a radical believer in Jesus. Natasha prays for God to reveal His plan for you. On CD number two, entitled The Simplicity of the Message, Natasha shares that the gospel is not just a message for unbelievers. It is the theme for the entire Bible. It is a love story, God's love for His people. The central figure of this story is Jesus. On CD number three, entitled The Right Kind of Knowledge, Natasha teaches it is not God's desire to present us with a book of rules, but a living revelation of His heart, which will produce trust in Him. Once you have trust and confidence in God, it does not matter the size of the problem. On CD number four, entitled Fresh Perspectives on Physical Healing, Natasha teaches you how to make the voice of God the final authority in your life, overcome obstacles to receive your healing, resist the symptoms of sickness, keep your eyes on Jesus and not on the healing. On CD number five, entitled Making Jesus Irresistible, Natasha shares that God comes down to your level to reveal His heart to you. This revelation of His love for you is what makes Jesus irresistible. When Jesus becomes irresistible to you, you will trust Him and miracles will happen. My heart today is to make it easy for people to get to know God's heart. Don't miss out on getting Natasha Shedrovaya's anointed five-part audio CD teaching set, Making Jesus Irresistible. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29, shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 3329. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 3329 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. <laughs> Natasha. You told me your life goal is to make Jesus irresistible to people. Why is that your passion? Because, you know, in my life, I resisted so much uh, the gospel. I resisted Jesus. I resisted God that my heart is toward the, to make God so easy to un be understood, to make Jesus irresistible so that people could respond to His love in faith, and then the miracles are the outcome of that. You, you were, as a new believer, because you were so proficient in languages, uh, you were a translator for uh, the Osbournes. Mm -hmm. uh, T.L. came and his daughter LaDonna, you translated for LaDonna. Mm -hmm. 
What was the big revelation you got mm -hmm. from T.L. Osborne? What was, what was the thing you got? What's the takeaway? Mm -hmm. Well, the greatest revelation that I got from T.L. Osborne, that the power is not in you. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to possess a special set of anointings or gifts. You just need to know the message. The power is in, is in the message. Apostle Paul says that, that, that I, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. If you know the message, if you know the truth, if you know the gospel, and people believe, that's what produces the greatest miracles, conversions, healings, etc. You don't know this, but you are looking right now at the first woman Bishop of the former Soviet Union, <laughs> and she has gone to 36,000 villages. Tell me about the babushkas. Babushkas. Those Russian babushkas, those old ladies, their life was tough. The cow is sick, husband is beating her and drinking, and she wants the message, she wants the truth, she wants God who will help her and will change her husband, set him free, and heal her cow. And we saw miracles of how God would touch even animals, and the cows would give the best milk. You know, we have one babushka, she says, my cow is a Christian cow now. My milk is the most delicious milk. <laughs> Honestly, this is what's happened. Very quickly, uh -huh. she had an open vision. I want you to look mm. into the camera and tell them what you saw in your open vision. Okay, one day I had an open vision. Uh, I was standing on the cross of Jesus. He was crucified and I was standing at the foot of the cross and I tried to look up because I wanted to see his face and yet the cross, it seemed like the cross was going into the heavens. I didn't see his face. I saw his feet all torn out and, and in blood. And so then suddenly I saw a big drop of blood uh, falling from Jesus' body, and it froze in the air. And when I looked at this drop of blood, I've heard God speaking to me. Do you realize that one drop of Jesus' blood would be enough to deal with the sin of the whole world? Yet, He shed all His blood just for you alone. And then I thought, this is it, this is it. This is the, the, what makes the difference in the life of a believer. I pray, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus now for all the people who don't know you or may they, they think they know you. But I pray that you would reveal yourself, reveal your love for them in the way that they would understand that all the, the sufferings and the price that Jesus paid, it was not just for all people in the world. All this price was paid just for you alone. All his blood was shed just for you alone. His sacrifice is very personal for you. So just respond in faith to him and accept him into your heart as your Lord and Savior. I say to the world, I say to the world Jesus, you're my Lord. Jesus, you're my Lord. Amen. Amen. next week on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm David Hernandez. Join me on It's Supernatural as I share how you can experience new dimensions of the Holy Spirit that will literally affect every area of your life.